Good morning. My name is Dale Greenwald. I'm a volunteer research collaborator with the Paleobiology Department. <clears throat> and every summer I get to go to Glacier National Park to collect fossil insects from the 46 million year old Kishinim Formation. <clears throat> the insects there are unique. There is a pronounced bias towards the preservation of very tiny insects. And despite their small size, they're preserved with a great amount of morphological detail. The tiny wasp in the upper right quadrant of this slide actually looks like it's embedded in amber. There's some very interesting taphonomic chemistry going on here about which we know very little. One of the aims of my research is to shed some light on how these insects became fossils. This is a good example of the size bias. This feather wing beetle fossil is only 670 microns in length. And yet you can see the hairs in its feathered wings and, and as well as other morphological detail. The Kishinin Formation may be the, one of the best places in the world to find mosquito fossils. <clears throat> we have over 50 specimens to date, and this has allowed us to identify the first fossil in the genus Culicida based on the presence of tiny patch of hairs or CT at the base of its wing, magnified in the bottom panel here. This again emphasizes the great detail with which the uh, morphology of these insects are preserved. And the Kishinin formation has provided us with the first ever fossil of a blood engorged mosquito. What are the chances that something like this would ever be preserved? The distended dark abdomen made us wonder whether or not there were remnants of the host's blood preserved in this specimen. Tim Rose from the Mineral Sciences Department determined that there were high levels of iron in this uh, abdomen. And so then we decided to look for porphyrin, the large organic molecule that chelates iron to make heme, the oxygen-carrying pigment of hemoglobin. Yulia Gariva and Sandra Silstrom in, from the Mineral Sciences Department provided these and other data. In the bottom panel, we have one of several negative controls. In the middle panel, we have the positive control. This is a spectrum of heme from purified pig hemoglobin. And in the top panel, we have the fingerprint-like spectrum of heme obtained from this 46 million year old fossil mosquito. <clears throat> Color is not an unusual component of many of the Kishining fossils, and it may well be that in the near future we will be able to detect other color pigments as well. So what was it that was so unique about the depositional environment 46 million years ago in Lake Kishinin? This is a piece of oil shale from the Kishinin Formation. It is 12 annual layers of sediment, or 12 varves thick. Each varve consists of two layers, a bottom white clastic layer and an upper very thin dark layer. And you can see it's within this thin dark layer that the shale splits which is good for us because that's where the fossil insects reside. <clears throat> when we do ion mapping of this thin dark layer, yellow here represents the presence of carbon, we find multiple parallel carbonaceous laminae. Might these laminae represent algal mats? So envision yourself, you're an insect, flying over the lake, and you fall onto the sticky surface of an algal mat. You're entrapped, the algae grow up and over and actually envelop the fossil insect, protecting and preserving it. Eventually the fossil mat sinks to the bottom of the lake, where it continues to preserve the insect, protecting it from predation and degradation. We are not the first to propose a taphonomic role for algal mats. We do have a great deal of, of, of other data to support this uh, theory, 
Obviously, we don't have time to present all of it this morning. I'd like to acknowledge a large number of people who have contributed to this work. The Department of Mineral Sciences has a lot of very magic instruments that uh, have helped tremendously in these studies. As we look at the photograph of a fossil beetle on the surface of a fossil algal map, it struggled ultimately unsuccessfully <coughs> to escape and in doing so lost a number of, of tiny or hairs from the uh, end of its abdomen. Thank you very much. question <clears throat> was how variable are the, uh, the uh, insect populations from layer to layer. <clears throat> the uh, oil shale, the fossiliferous shale is spread over about seven miles of the Flathead River. It forms the western boundary of the park. <clears throat> and we do find differences in populations from site to site, but each site consists of, of many feet of oil shale. And uh, it seemed to be pretty homogeneous in terms of the types of insects that are recovered at different layers from any one given site. Thank you. <laughs> 